Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Elise Yeezy Show. I am your host, the best MC in the galaxy, Elise Yeezy. It's gone from best podcast host to MC. It's going to be quite a career move from me. We are here, as always, with Rob. Hey. And with my good friend, stand-up comedian, Jake Duthie. Hello, how's it going? I did pronounce your last name right, right? You did, you got Duffy. it first time, well done. I mean, we've known each other for a long time, <laughs> a it's bit fine. awkward. Uh, I literally had uh, one of my mates ask what my middle name was after knowing me for about 20 years, so um, yeah, which, I will Which mates was that? It wasn't Joe, was it? No, he'll no, He'll be, no. he'll get it. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody Joe, God damn it. What is no, your middle name? It's Lau. Lau, L-O-W-E, yeah. like Rob Lau. Exactly, yeah. Incredible. Oh, I know, madness. That's mine. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about you, though. You're okay. a stand-up comedian and my good friend. Thank you. Um, yes, no, I am both of those things. Um, I mean, don't go into this expecting me to be like a pro comedian or anything. I'm very much in the amateur stages. Um, I mean, as some context, I went into a competition heat last night and did not get through. So that's the kind of like level of talent you can expect today. Hey, he's being modest. He's very <laughs> good and very funny. I've been oh, your... Um, it's not a plus one, it's not a wedding, a bringer. No, yeah, bringer, yes. yeah. To several... Yeah, no, you have accompanied me to several gigs and been very supportive, so thank you very much. Oh, um, see, big me up. I brought him here just to big me up, to prove it, to people yeah, that literally... I have a good... Why are you shaking your head behind <laughs> the camera? They can't see you. I'm going to get a little like webcam here and have Kez cam. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jake and I have actually known each other for a very long time. We met yes. back in college through a mutual friend... And then there's a party. I don't really remember that much of that. Then we didn't see each other for, I believe it was Jenny's party, but we didn't yeah. see each other for several years until you came up to me in the street yes. in London. Yes. <laughs> no, it was, uh, that was a weird coincidence because you were doing a stand-up course at the same time as I was doing a gig and you just happened to kind of walk right past me. So. And Jake was yeah. wearing a hat, so I didn't recognise him. And I just, <laughs> but I was just so nonplussed about it. He just walked straight up to me and was yeah. like, hey, are you? And I was thinking, yes, whoever you're about to say, yes, I am. Yeah. As, as we've established on the show, I'm very used to people just coming up to me and talking about demons and stuff. <laughs> You've got to check out that episode. DJ, oh, right. no, I shouldn't say his name. I'm not going to say his name, but if okay. he thinks there's demons and everything and it's very enlightening. Okay. Yeah, I can look into that. <laughs> <laughs> so how long have you been doing stand-up for, would you say? Oh, God. I mean, I started in May 2019, but it feels a little disingenuous to say I've been doing it for two years because obviously the past like year and a half, I've done pretty much no stand-up other than like maybe two Zoom gigs, which uh, are not fun, uh, <laughs> safe to say. But um, yeah, now that like the lockdowns have kind of eased up, I'm going to get back into the swing of things and um, yeah, just really enjoying it. I'm doing about kind of two, three gigs a week and yeah, um, just trying to get back up to the level I was before the world went to shit, basically. But I think what were the that. Zoom gigs like? Because I did, I did remember seeing you post things about them and I believe, were you doing Ashley Gorman's? Um, Zoom get, I, was he he's another stand-up comedian he'll be on the show he's sick he's safe oh, mate yeah. i'm friends yeah. with all these they all just love <laughs> me i'm not a comedian myself but um <laughs> no um but at least you at least you did something over lockdown because a lot of yeah. people a lot of people you know which is fair enough it was a very stressful time but at least you were still trying but yeah i mean a bit what, like the, what were the zoom kicks like awkward <laughs> very <laughs> awkward but how many people were these well, you don't know. That's the thing. Like, just you're just basically people sign in and yeah, you're just talking to your laptop for like five minutes, and um, yeah, with absolutely nothing to play off. So, yeah, you basically just feel like a crazy person in your living room, just kind of yeah. You can't do any of the standard stuff on stage, like how's everyone doing? Where are you from? No, and I mean, engage with the audience. Presumably. No, no. I mean, I asked my laptop when it was from, and I just got a complete dead response. So yeah, it was just a. Uh, yeah, it's just a waste of time for all concerned. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds a bit sad, actually. It was. Could it was very not, sad. Could people not interact? Were, were their microphones off during your your oh, bit? Um, you'd have, like, other comedians, but, um, yeah, no one would, like... You're not going to heckle someone over Zoom. That's just way too much. But, um, yeah, you, you kind of hear, like, the odd bit of very muffled laughter, which is obviously <laughs> quite... <laughs> kind of more polite because pity laugh that's it it was all just pity laughs because no jokes really land over the webcam format oh shit um chuck but, it around chuck don't it matter around. ain't got no feelings just okay do sweet that. that's cool yeah <laughs> get oh. right in your face oh. <laughs> <laughs> but um sorry i completely lost my train of thought there but um oh the zoom gigs the um yeah the laughter's always a little bit stifled mm -hmm. um 
it was just not really an appropriate format for stand up. So it's good to be kind of getting back on stage and everything and just, um, yeah, just hoping there's not another lockdown at this point, really. But we'll see how we go. With the Zoom gigs, was it just mm. other comedians? Um, I mean, again, it's hard to tell. You don't know who's you on the other end. Yeah, it could be anyone. Yeah. It sounds like it's like the muffled laughter thing. Yeah. As though you're basically practicing your, your set in your apartment and you can hear your neighbours sort of laughing. If they overhear the you, just <laughs> like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, God, I hope not, because I practice my set in front of the mirror all the time and I always feel like a psychopath doing it, but I don't think the neighbours have heard me. If they have, they haven't said anything yet, but... Yeah, they're probably, probably too afraid to. They are now, yeah. No, they're kind of shit I talk about. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, I find that quite... Um, hmm. I do find... I mean, I've only done stand-up a few times, but my very first time was several years ago in Kentish Town, mm. and I was very young, maybe, I want to say 22. You know, oh, yeah. very yeah. very young. I didn't really put that much effort into it, and I just didn't... I, I didn't really know how to craft jokes. I'm not saying mm. I'm amazing now, but I do know that there is a formula tried and tested, you know? Yeah. Um, and I went to like this really, it was a really small gig. There was maybe like eight or nine other people. Okay. And it was literally just other stand-up comedians. And I, I've always been told that if you're at a gig and it's just like 90% other stand-up comedians, you're probably not going to get as many laughs as you would like normal audience. Because some people can be a little bit tactical. You know, which I don't know how much I want to believe of that. I got laughs, but still, I don't know how much I want to believe of that. I'm like, other stand-up comedians have told me that, you know. And it's quite right. difficult when you have... um. Because a lot of open mics, it is the comedian and their bringers. So yeah. it's like 50% the comedian's there. That's 50% it, 50% yeah. audience members. I don't know. To be honest, I think the gigs where it's just other comedians is probably the best time to try new material. Because, mm. um, you know, you've not got the worry of kind of, oh, is this actual audience full of real human beings who don't do comedy going to actually like me and enjoy my stuff? But um, you can just sort of focus on just experimenting a little bit more. And then you've got people who are better equipped to give you feedback rather than just like random members of the public who give you unsolicited advice after every gig, which oh, that, oh my God, must tell feel us. good. Oh, it's great, yeah. Um. Tell us some examples. I oh, love getting God. unsolicited yes. advice from people, especially oh, about my own career. <laughs> That's it, yeah. No, it's just kind of like, I don't know, you'll get some guy, like some guy came up to me after I was doing a kind of more physical routine and was just like, oh, so yeah, no, you were looking a bit spaced out and I just really thought you could, you really needed to like play that up. Like if you just stared into space for like 30 seconds. 30 like, seconds when yeah. you've got a five minute gig. Yeah, my set is five minutes long. I don't have 30 <laughs> seconds to spare. Like who is this What's guy? What's that? Is that like 30, that's that one tenth? One tenth that's of your a, gig just spent like in silence staring into space. Yeah, yeah but if you can hold them for that 30 seconds. Oh, it's, it's all about how you stare <sighs> into space for 30 seconds, isn't it? But, um, but yeah, and then I asked, oh, obviously do you do stand up yourself? He's like, oh no. Sweet, thank you, man. Like, <laughs> off you fuck, basically. But um, yeah, no, but I, I don't mind playing to other comedians. And to be honest, like, I kind of went into the circuit thinking, oh, God, it's going to be so cutthroat and people are going to be out to mess each other around. But no, to be honest, I found completely the opposite. It's a really supportive and, like, nice community. So, um, yeah, well, why were people like telling me like loads of nonsense? Basically, this was way. But this was years ago, like you know, oh. several years ago at this point. Maybe the and scenes changed. Depends people. on the area, maybe. Well, it was all oh, in yeah. London, you know. I've never done anything outside of London because mm. it doesn't exist. I don't <laughs> the know. The whole of England should just be how, London. <laughs> I don't know how homogenous London is. This is true. Like, I can't yeah. tell one area from, apart from another. If you go to enough open mics, which um, I went for a phase of going to open mics quite frequently, not to do mm. stuff, just to see people. And you would see like a few of the same people would crop up. Oh, yeah. Every yeah, so absolutely. often. It's amazing to see people from like, you know, five or four years ago mm. go on to do like really, really, really well. There's, That's um, it. what's his name? I think his name is Nish Kumar. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, Nish Kumar. I saw him years ago. I think he was, I think he was doing a, he was opening for Noel Fielding oh, in sweet. Shoreditch sometime. Nice. Um, but he was incredible. He had this whole thing about monopoly and mm. capitalism. And afterwards, I went, I went up to him and chatted to him. And he was like, he was really cool. And he was up for, um, oh, at the time, like, mm. what was I doing at the time? I think I wanted to do YouTube, but I hadn't quite done it yet. And I think I wanted to have like some sort of like pre Elise Easy show thing. So I was like, oh, we should do something together. And he was really up for it. Gave me his email and stuff. And that just never 
I didn't do anything with it. <laughs> so Nish Kumar, if you're out oh. there, do you want to come on this show? It's me from years ago. Do you probably had probably had like black and blonde hair then. Probably look more youthful now. Saw the injections. Yeah, yeah. Not Botox or filler, but I won't get into it. <laughs> <laughs> but so it's so nice to see um, you know, people from like a few years ago then go on to do so well. That's it, yeah. I mean, it's getting to the point where, um, you know, particularly the people who are really, really active online over lockdown, like they're really making like leaps and strides with their careers, which is really awesome to see. So um, there is hope. There is hope for me at this stage. You're um, doing really well. I mean, you, you, you put in all the work. You yeah, know, you're doing yeah, like do. two to three gigs a week. Yes. Yeah. No, I do try and work hard at it. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's kind of like the space between a hobby and a second job currently is where I would put it. But, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's tiring, but it's just something I love doing. So I can't really stop myself. What's yeah. your process like for writing jokes? Oh God. Um, <laughs> I find it very interesting to ask different comedians this because one time I shit you not several years ago when I was working at a pub and we mm. would have open mics downstairs. Yeah. This one guy, I started talking to him and <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing. He just, he was just like, he was just a guy that, he, he was, he was like, it's just words keep coming into my head to describe him and I'm like no don't say that basically Barry Stanton if you've ever heard of the old Twitter account called Barry Stanton he was just a bit like that you know probably like to have a nice warm curling and so oh, I was yeah. talking to him about what's your process like for you know making um creating jokes and comedy and he would say oh I'll just go on stage I won't rehearse or script or anything I'll just go on stage and just start talking about my life and people find that funny and I was like and that because I was younger um I thought that everyone could do that. I thought that every, I thought people on YouTube weren't scripting their videos. I thought people were just going on turning the camera and I would always feel like, why am I so unfunny then? Why am I so shit? And why am I not good enough? Like this person can just go on stage and just, but that's not what people do. No, I just, the thought of even approaching comedy like that just gave me heart palpitations to be honest. <laughs> right? I feel a yeah. bit like, oh God, imagine going on stage just and nothing Just start playing prepped. piano. Just start just, playing yeah, it. Just, just do, do it. it. <laughs> oh, you're just pressing keys at the end What's of the day. What's a scale? I don't know. Just... <laughs> Ross Noble does that, I think. Oh yeah, but he's... He does that and uh, Stuart Lee can, but they're, yeah, they've they been they're... doing it for like 30 years. I do enjoy yeah. a good Stuart Lee. Yeah, at that point you already have a, a, like a whole bank of, yeah, I mean, the amount of Russell it. Brand gigs that I've gone to over the past however many fucking years by now, um, I can like I can hear when he's doing a bit that sounds very improvised, but it's like I heard that five years ago. Gonna yeah, see him in November <laughs> and get him on the show. Yes. Um, sorry, your <laughs> writing process. What's no, it like? So, um, I I mean I start by taking sometimes something that's happened to me in my day to day life, or sometimes just kind of uh, something that I find interesting, and then just try and extrapolate and make it weirder and weirder until I feel like it's weird enough for my tastes, I guess. Uh, then, as I said earlier, I um, speak it in front of the mirror like a psychopath for about three to four hours and see if I can like riff on it a little bit. And then I just nervously obsess over it until I perform it for the first time. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, it's, it's a very a, a very obsessive process, my writing process, but I don't know, it's hopefully improved over the years. We'll see. <laughs> oh, definitely. Let me come to one of your gigs next. All right, sweet. Well, you're oh. doing enough of them, so even I'll make it to one. This is it. I mean, I've got one tomorrow if you guys are interested. But um, What day is it tomorrow? Sunday. Sunday. What am I doing the Sunday? The Lord's Day. The Lord's, yeah. What am I doing, Kes Motion? What am I doing on Sunday? Come on, you should have my calendar. Absolutely nothing. What am I? Probably going swimming. I like, that's my Or complaining that's about not going swimming. Yeah. Which is what? more frequent. When was I complaining about not going swimming? When did this happen? A few times online. <laughs> I'm really, I'm just, I'm really into swimming at the moment. Oh, okay. I'm really into, really into outdoor pools when yeah. it's sunny. Oh, okay. Sorry, you know, the, the pretending phrase, I'm not in England. Yeah, the phrase complaining about not swimming just really threw me for a second. Like just there, like, why am I not in fucking water right now? Like, <laughs> I've, I've, I've discovered that I actually really like being in the water, oh, okay, which is nice because yeah. a few years ago I was in Brighton for like Brighton Pride and stuff, and I was swimming yeah. in the, I was trying to have a swim in the sea, but I'd forgotten how to like swim, and you know, it's all pebbles and stones i hadn't been swimming since i like properly and since i was about 14 or so you know okay. it's all pebbles and stones so i slipped over like some pebbles and then i thought that's oh. it I'm, I'm out to sea i'm gonna die <laughs> and realistically i was probably about like seven foot from the shore and yes. i was like, I was like and so my boyfriend's been teaching me how to swim oh now, now i'm good at swimming do you have a little uh, dolphin 
like waistband no, I that don't floats wear near the armbands. Oh, why not, man? <laughs> no, but my boyfriend did buy me a um, you know, like one one of those kind of like slabs of yeah, the floats. Yeah, the, oh, the yeah. slabs okay. of plasticky foamy things. Nice. <laughs> which I've not taken away because that's embarrassing. I'm not gonna go to a swimming pool with one of those at the age I am, as young as I look. <laughs> I don't know. I think you should. It's a statement, man. If only to just use it like a toaster. Under the water, up it shoots. (laughs) That's what I do. Like, because he'll bring it along and then we'll just take turns, like, standing on it and pretending to surf whilst in the water. Um, I did see a... uh, But that's acceptable at your age. (laughs) Yeah, totally. Because the thing is, is you're with someone else and we can both be immature together. And it's like, oh, look at those pair of adults just having fun, reliving their childhood. If it's just me by myself in a pool, I look a bit like a nonce. (laughs) I'm sorry, that was a bit too out there. (laughs) <laughs> but it's like, when I say nonce I don't mean actual paedophile I just mean like weirdo you know what I mean I just look like a weirdo if I'm by myself let me pretend to surf on a little <laughs> you should write jokes about my life it's very tragic <laughs> <laughs> do you know what actually speaking mm. of comedians yeah. I'm going to do a video possibly this week where mm. I'm going to make a public apology to a comedian that I've previously fouled oh. Kevin James uh, right I don't know you hmm? you're pretty nice about him on the other episode that's the thing even when i'm slagging someone off i'm still pretty nice about it Hmm. you know but i just feel like i had to make a public apology to him and to to comedy in general because i just didn't understand him before you know because i watched paul blart mall cop 2 and i did a whole video review on it and i was like what the hell is this shit like what is this This is so this is horrible there's this one bit where this woman talks to him and he just goes airbag and it's like what are you what are you doing? Like, what is that? How how did that line get, like stay in this film? But then I watched his um, 2001 special okay. and his 2019 special, and he reused jokes in the 2019 special from the 2001 special. So good, he had to tell them that like, 19 Kevin. years later. Oh. And then I watched Hitch the other day with um, Will Smith. Oh yeah, he was in that, wasn't he? And you know what? I just didn't understand him before because him, you know, slipping over marbles, he's knocked onto the floor or just danced like a goofball. He is he is the undisputed king of comedy. Of course, yeah. I'm not I'm not even being insincere. I I uh, I think I understand him now and I think I I like I I weirdly like him. What is he like Aww. the Jackie Chan of physical comedy to you? More he's or less. A yeah. Because to me the Jackie Chan of physical comedy is Jackie Chan. Anyway, should we get on to um, the yeah. meat of what's this doing? The meat of this podcast. This is going to be a very long clown world episode. Sweet. I'm excited to say. Okay. Who wants to go first? Should I go first? Seeing <laughs> as I created this format. In true fashion, I haven't read the article, I just read the headline and thought, that'll do. That's how <laughs> I approach all my clown worlds, by the way. So if you're ever thinking, God, she's really funny, that is pre improvisation. But years of practice. <laughs> years of practice me just bringing up dj congru <laughs> my best mate you know him i don't know why i don't oh, yeah. say his name i'm just protective over him because he's just so like harmless yeah <laughs> not protect him you guys can fend for yourself you do comedy you can fend for yourself yeah, yeah you know really. what's someone gonna do heckle you in the street you can deal with that huh, exactly, laugh it off yeah. <laughs> you who's oh. gonna go to your village <laughs> true <laughs> 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 Man poos out of penis and ejaculates from bum due to rare condition. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Is there a name for the condition? Let's find out. Oh God. A, Let's, ma- yeah. a man had to seek medical attention after he began suffering from rectal ejaculation. Maybe that's the medical name. That's as good as we're getting. I was going to go for bum cum, but... <laughs> bum cum! <laughs> Is that, that's not Latin. Um, it is actually. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> Over the course of two years, the 33-year-old oh. noticed a number of peculiar medical issues, including fecal matter in his u- urine. Jesus. Uh, fecaluria. Fecaluria. F-E-C-A-L-U-R-I-A. Fecaluria. And passing a substantial amount of urine and semen from his anus. A subs- How much is a substantial amount? Are we talking like a bottle worth? Are we talking like a tablespoon? I mean, you don't even want a tablespoon I mean, of cum coming out of your ass. More than, uh, more than any, I would say. Yeah. It's <laughs> too much. Think, yeah. But after experiencing pain in his testicles for almost a week, he decided to get a doctor's opinion on what was going on. 
According to a paper published in the medical journal, um, Sirius, Sirius, C U R E U S. I can't pronounce things. It's a, it's a, oh. it's a quirk of mine. Tee quirky. I just thought you meant the Harry Potter character for a second. Serious? Medical journal, serious black. Like. <laughs> Tests showed that he had a urinary tract infection as well as a problem with his rectal wall. A CT scan showed that he had a gas filled structure. <laughs> What's that? What's a gas filled structure? It sounds like. <laughs> it sounds like, you know. You know like a small you- planet. <laughs> like when you, when you look at pictures of the moon that have been unphotoshopped by NASA and there's weird structures on it. Do you not know that? Google it, mate. Google it. Weird sh- obelisk on Mars, structures on the moon. Keep Ooh. up, Kes Motion. Come on. <laughs> you, have <laughs> to fo- you have to Photoshop them out, no not Photoshop them in. <laughs> it's, it's totally a thing. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Which further tests revealed was something called a fistula. So he has a he has a fistula. <laughs> Oh, and I've abnorm- heard of that, yeah. Yeah, I've <laughs> seen that on Pornhub. An abnormal <laughs> passageway between the man's urethra and rectum. Kez, you read this. He doesn't die at the end, does he? Because I'll have to cut this whole bit out. Okay, good. Because it gets madder, doesn't it? The story gets even oh wilder. <laughs> like any true hero's journey story. <laughs> so we're entering the descent. Yeah, We're not yet is... in the belly of the whale. Yeah, we're just heading into touching the his act fistula, right <laughs> <laughs> and it was this connecting tissue that was causing the unique case of the rectal passage of semen to occur. The medical team then got to work finding out the cause of the problem, ruling out possible infections such as tuberculosis, inflammatory bowel disease, tuberculosis, comma, inflammatory bowel disease. Full stop. Shouldn't they have like another one? Yeah, for free. Yeah. Yeah. What's it called? The something of free. Do you want them to make one up? Just yeah. to fill that space. Tuberculosis, <laughs> inflammatory bowel disease. Night and... blindness. <laughs> yeah, it should be an end. This is from Lad Bible. I expected better, but maybe I the onus is on me. The Lad Bible article that I read was better written than the Metro ones, which were riddled with mistakes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they have to put out a lot of articles a day. And that That's we'll... what happens when you do 17 every year. <laughs> we'll get to a Metro article in a bit that um, tickled my fancy. The man also denied having suffered... The man also denied having suffered any kind of rectal trauma or penetration. <laughs> so he I mean, went he there and they did some, like, they did some, what's it called? A little biopsy yeah, or whatever. And he was like, look, nothing's gone up my ass." Why is he? Why is he being so defensive? It's 2021. It like, don't matter. No one's going to judge you if you've like yeah. done a little bit of bum stuff. <laughs> As we're all laughing about yeah. it. I assure you, I have no idea how that gas filled structure got up there. Like... <laughs> <laughs> the obelisk from Mars was found. It's hilarious. not my structure. It's my friends. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> no. Why do they have to call it rectal trauma? Can rectal fun? Yeah, I think rectal fun time is. You know, I don't think it's that fun if suddenly like you're having stuff come up your ass. Depends how much you like. Disagree. Disagree. He's ejaculating. <laughs> Someone's having fun. Eventually, they discovered that he had, however, been in a three-week coma following cocaine and PCP intoxication two years previous, oh, which was about the same shit. time he started beginning the bizarre symptoms. Like. How do you? Why are you laughing so much? How do you do? How do you do so much cocaine and PCP that you're in a fucking coma from it? How is he doing the cocaine and PCP? Do they? Was he doing it up his bum? Because yeah, you, 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 you can do it up your bum. You can. Do Never it done it, but you can. You I don't can. know why you would. Why would you? Yeah. Why would you? Your nose is right there. Of, because you're sick of the nosebleeds, presumably. So you want an ass bleed <laughs> yeah. instead? It's easier to hide at work. Oh. <laughs> I'm just saying, if you sneeze at work and suddenly, oh no. Yeah, I mean, you wouldn't be able to wear white trousers or anything. Like, What yeah. job requires you to wear white trousers? Tra- uh, horse rider? Chef. Chef? Yeah. Mm. Chef? They're filthy anyway. They are filthy. Who? Chefs. Chefs. They like doing cocaine. They love they it. They sure yeah. do. They would know. Yeah. I used to be a chef. <laughs> I used to be a chef. I didn't do the cocaine, but a lot of the ones I worked with sure did. <laughs> it was during this time he was fitted with a Foley catheter oh yeah yeah foley well what's a foley catheter because foley like foley artists like when yeah. you make noises and stuff <laughs> well, that's the thing I, I don't know what the word is you're trying to enunciate but um 
Catheter is like C A T H E T E R. Yeah, that's like the P tube. Catheter. Yeah, I know what catheter is. It was the oh. first part. <laughs> Foley. Foley. Oh, yeah, okay. like Foley artists. You know, so I don't know what a Foley catheter is. I don't know much. Doctors believe was the root cause of the issue. You'll be pleased to know they were able to treat the man's condition, performing a joint colorectal and urologic surgical fistula repair, which closed the prostatic fistula. That Hooray! sounds <laughs> intensive. That can, sounds... You re- can you reread that operation? That sounded like there was a whole bunch going on. Was it colorectal, urinary, and... A colorectal and urologic surgical fistula repair. Good for him. I'm glad that he's okay. <laughs> Me too. Jeez. What are your sounds, thoughts on that? Sounds like an ordeal. <laughs> I feel better about everything in my life now. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> Holy shit. There's only one way up from that, I guess. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You could say he's on the up now. Yeah. Good for him. I'm, I'm happy for him. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> How do you do that much cocaine and PCP? I don't really get it. No. What, what one is PCP? Is it the one that's also got, it's also called angel dust? Is it the one that people, is it the one that people take and then they eat people's faces? Or is yeah. that bath salts? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's angel dust. That, that's, the, that's the one where if you take too much, it will just go absolutely fucking nuts. And eat someone's face. I believe it's a Venn diagram of like, if they're not all the same thing, they all sort of meet. <laughs> Yeah. In this horrifying middle <laughs> where the police cannot take you down. So. <laughs> <laughs> Who has the next clown world? Um, I, I, Are we going clock? Yes. Clock. Okay, going clockwise. I have a grand court jury riding in a Clio is jailed for 90th offence in 27 years. A uh, grandmother has been jailed after clocking up 90 driving offences during a 27-year history of terrorising the roads. <laughs> <laughs> Good for her. <laughs> and when they said Gran, I assumed much older lady. Yeah, like 70. She she's 44. Was, she's 44, this is the thing. She's quite a young nan. Um, but, I mean, you know, she's she's packed it in. She's really, really made use of the... Much time like the had. guy previous. <laughs> <laughs> I walked into that, didn't I? <laughs> um, yeah, she was He chased. reversed into it. Wait. <laughs> Uh, she was chased by police after smashing into a Toyota Igo, being driven by a man in his 80s, then veering into the path of oncoming traffic in a bid to get away. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, just imagining the car chase in my head right this now. This is it, yeah. It's <laughs> like a Hollywood budget, but where, 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 where is this? A Clio. <laughs> yeah, a Clio in Wigan. Like, <laughs> <laughs> this is my new Fast and the Furious 10, oh, Imagine all pitch. the gear changes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bickers family. <laughs> 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 she had already been banned from the roads twice this year. First in April when she was caught disqualified. She was disqualified for 12 months after being caught while eight times over the drug drive limit. Eight times over the drunk drive? Drug drive. Drug, drug. drive. What drugs is she on PCP? This is it, yeah. <laughs> no wonder she was unstoppable. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, yeah. And then um, the second, because I read that, like another time she was pulled up again. Yeah. And then she was still four times over. I said, oh, I've cut down by half. It's fine. <laughs> 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 but I love that um, when she was being defended in court, uh, the defense was um, Taylor had issues with epilepsy, anxiety, and depression, and had been planning to drive the stolen Clio, because it was stolen as well, <laughs> <laughs> Legend. to her local chemist to pick up a prescription. <laughs> So it's like she's a little confused, but she's so, got the spirit. That's it, yeah. I can imagine the tone of the defence trying to deliver that bullshit. They know full well they're, oh, yeah. they're not getting it anywhere with this. Oh, no. And you've got a paid... That's like, it, yeah. Paid defender there, like, just... Where it's a, like, solicitor or barrister or whatever, and they're just like, yeah... <laughs> Yeah, you, yeah, well. I'm going to work out how many driving offences that is. It's like 27 years. 27 years, 90, 90 driving offences. I think n- I did that wrong. The fact that she keeps getting her licence back. No, it's, like, it's, three point, it. it's point, three point three 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 a year, yeah. driving offences. Like, that could happen to anyone. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, like amazing. the last time I stole a car. <laughs> <laughs> just, just a mistake, you know, just open the wrong door one day. <laughs> How does it end uh, for her? How did it end for her? Um... Well, I think she was tearful, wasn't she? She was, yeah, she was quite sad. Uh, She'll I mean, be on the, the road soon, don't worry about it. <laughs> this is it. I mean, 2022. 
they do like the picture they've captioned with like Taylor sobbed as she jailed, as she was jailed for a year is just her looking kind of smug with a glass of wine. Let's so see. Let's yeah, they did it pretty good. <laughs> I don't really feel like she regrets it too much. I think she's going to do it again. <laughs> the Metro, once again, with their very passive-aggressive picture choices. Yes. No, absolutely. Hey, how old? She's 44. She... Yeah. Okay. No, I, to be honest, like... She looks very young. The thing that I found weirdest about this article was that I... Driving kind... offences keep you young. This is it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> For someone who lives fast and drives fast. That's it, yeah. <laughs> so how long was she... Do... Sorry, I've just t- taken your phone, but... Like, they listen to Judge Graham Smith. What? Uh, listen to oh. this. Uh, this oh, misandry. Yeah. Misandry in action. <laughs> it's a very. It's very unusual for me to be sentencing a woman for dangerous driving. It's almost always young men who are driving in police chases. <laughs> As well, evidenced by that other guy who did, what was it, 140 miles an hour? Oh, while stoned as well, which is just an impressive He's amount of... In the zone. Yeah, Very relaxed. He's got some get, and, get up and go, and I can really respect that. Like, I, yeah. I struggle to do my laundry if I'm high. Like, <laughs> she was ja- She's jailed for a year, branded a danger to the public at Bolton, Crown Court. She was also given a further 40-month ba- month ban. That's it. <laughs> 40, 40 months. So yeah. Give her, yeah. give her a couple of years to think this over. She'll be right as rain. Like. I like that she exemplifies... Um, I just watched this episode the other day of The Office. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Stanley, when he's vacationing in Florida. Live fast, die fast. Leave, uh, leave, live fast, drive fast. Leave a sexy corpse. <laughs> <laughs> She's doing it. Yeah. Good for her. What's the next one? Okay. I like an animal feature. Um, So we're back again. This pops up every couple of years in the news. We've got rats as big as cats. Sweet. Amazing. Rats as big as cats. I've heard that in a Stephen King novel. Rats as big (laughs) as cats. You wouldn't believe it. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Apparently, lockdown has ramped things up a level. Um, (laughs) Mr. Delbridge, rat catcher, <laughs> has been, uh, has been, expl- <laughs> the rodent population was getting bigger and braver. They used to work around us, but now they're gaining access where they wouldn't have attempted before. <laughs> I like the phrasing of this bit. Next bit. They're letting themselves into people's houses and businesses. <laughs> That's the thing. They're getting large enough to knock on doors. They're now. just like, <laughs> literally using the handle. Yeah. <laughs> to, Two cat-sized rats standing on top of one another can exactly. open the door, wearing, surely. Wearing a trench coat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, watch out for their toilets as rats are gaining access to their homes via sewage pipes. Mm. Crawling up through the sewage pipes. Sure into the, so Having a little swim. Submerged in water up through the bowl. At that point, they've tried so hard to get into your house. I think they deserve it. That's it, yeah. Like, swimming through some might, sewage. You well, through water. Well it. <laughs> My friend's flat. Um, in the next town over from me, they had a rat problem. They had rats in their walls, rats in their <laughs> laundry. Um, my friend was making <laughs> in his... the washing machine. <laughs> it's just going around. <laughs> like a big hamster wheel. It actually big softens the clothes wheel. if you've got a rat <laughs> lying around with them. But no, um, he he turned around from making a sandwich, and a rat just came out of his kitchen bin, oh. just and looked at him, and then carried him out his day. And he was like, "I almost don't want to get rid of them now. I kind of respect him more." That's just it, yeah. having the balls to show up in the middle of the day. Yeah. I don't say it as a problem at all. I like rats. Well, depends where they've been. Have they come through my toilet? Just give them a little wash. Wash. <laughs> help yourself <laughs> to any of the bath, oh, have you bath not seen, stuff. Have you never <laughs> seen that video of the rat like having a little shower? I love that video Aww. so much. I haven't seen it. Like, it's it's, oh, it's like so wiping good. Itself. Rats Aww. are very intelligent. You know? we'll, I don't uh, think this is a problem at all. Should we, should we link that video? <laughs> In the description of this film. I mean, just for, so for my can... sake, as much as anything else, because I need to see this. this point, Google like... rat in a shower. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the pest controller said he's used to the, his busiest time of year being over the winter, but he's been flat out all summer and has to hire more staff oh, because God. cats aren't dealing with the problem. As he said, a well, sensible cat enough. doesn't deal with a big rat. I think fair enough. Like, I don't know. I mean... How long do you reckon we have before they're human size? Not oh, long. I can't based wait. That'd be this. sick. What about if they're horse size and then you can ride them around? Like, oh shit! I don't fear the animal kingdom. I'm like Mary Poppins like with more swear words. Battle cat from here. No, wait. But, yeah. not Mary Poppins, Snow <laughs> <no> White. <laughs> I'm like Mary Poppins. But, well, I don't fly around on an umbrella. What she has, a, she has a magic handbag full of rats, like, just like in the movie. <laughs> more sympathy though. Lockdowns 
and the pandemic forced rats to change their behavior. Okay. Didn't we all? Didn't, how, how didn't so? we all? Well, they're just normal, adapting with the times. Good yeah. for them. Normal <laughs> sources of food, such as restaurants, were closed. Oh. They can't go out for their meal, so they're staying in. Oh, the poor rats. Near you, oh. in your apartment building, <laughs> just punching through the walls eventually. <laughs> They Finding do, all those PCP box. pockets. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, rats box. Rats box. It's a little bonding exercise that they will do. Mm -hmm. My two rat. Uh, well, I had three. YouTube that later. Yeah. yeah oh, <laughs> my my two would do it all the time. They'd have a little. But and sometimes if it got a bit too, if they're squeaking too much, you have to be like, right, right, that's it. Round over. Ding, ding. Calm down. Okay. But they will stand on their hind legs and they'll Aww. box and then they'll be really dramatic. They'll sort of box and then they'll freeze like this. Like, like kind of like, what is it? Rocky, um, Rocky three or two? Oh, yeah. Rocky three, three, freeze frame ending. The free frame. <laughs> yeah, it's like that. <laughs> so we are at the end of the article, but I just like the little tag at the end. Earlier this year, rats more than a foot long were spotted in Grimsby. <laughs> Where else? What a, nice, <laughs> what a nice end to that. Yeah. Okay, for the next one. Car flipped over after couple having sex, knocked handbrake and rolled downhill. <laughs> and it has God. a um, it has a picture of a car on its side. Window doesn't look smashed, so fair enough. And the caption says they were strengthening their relationship when they accidentally knocked the handbrake of their Yaris. <laughs> Yaris? Yeah. An amorous couple had to be rescued after their car flipped over when the handbrake was knocked in the throes of passion. The pair pulled over on what appears to be a narrow country lane in Derbyshire to enjoy some alone time yesterday evening. They were strengthening their relationship when they knocked the handbrake of their Yaris. The car rolled down a hill and flipped on its side, blocking the road and leaving the couple trapped. Well, if it was on its side, why couldn't they just open the... Because it was on its side, right? So door down, windscreen. Yeah. Door. Why can't right. they just... I was told recently uh, this happened to a friend of mine their car flipped and what? it's the, well, there you go. the physics yeah yeah they're fine mm. um the physics of opening a door vertically is actually it oh, it is really yeah. heavy you'd have to be like relatively strong guy i mean i did question this because there's two of them yeah they're energetic enough to be having sex <laughs> they've probably got the energy to maybe work together to <laughs> strengthen your, your relationship that way by getting out of this <laughs> situation kick it's out like the windscreen like i don't know team building <laughs> <laughs> the lovers were forced to call police to come and rescue them. <laughs> Embarrassing. Oh, no. Derbyshire's policing unit shared pictures of their antics on Twitter. Of course they did. How unprofessional. Lovely. How <laughs> on Twitter. One image shows the car on its side down, a secluded road hidden away from prior guys. The Metro, they are doing, the Metro do this classic thing where they literally just fucking repeat the story in different words. We oh. already know. We know <laughs> it, that's been established at least like three times so far. But the fun that viewers and listeners aren't getting from a metro story is the constant adverts and things that change the web page when you're trying to scroll oh, yeah. and you're trying to scroll down but it actually changes the size of the bar so actually suddenly you click down like oh, three okay. paragraphs and you they've gone them really bad of it recently actually because i went on like the metro the other day and there was um adverts on either side right mm, and yeah. then there was an advert at the top and then there and was then an the advert at the comes... and then the the ones at the top that then get bigger and you're like no go away and it's just it was like <laughs> and being the video on... that plays in the bottom right hand corner yes uh... it was like being on the daily mail website <laughs> <laughs> like the daily mail my computer i only go on the daily mail when i want to go on this is a favorite pastime of mine finding really horrible daily mail comments and then oh, yeah. ringing up dj congram being like listen to this <laughs> um the tv and showbiz section go on any article go on the comments click best rated You'll have so much fun because it's just people. It's the very worst of humanity just being so nasty to people who are just who are just famous for like having a bit of a craft. Yeah. You know? um, but like my computer doesn't like loading the daily mail. It takes ages to load and mm. it's it lags. Like when you try and scroll down, it just lags because it's just so bad. The Metro is going to be. Do you want to be like the Daily Mail? The Metro and Daily Mail are both owned by DMD Media, I think. I think. Dun, 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 dun. Matter, which is like it's just one of those things where it's like all media is only owned by like six corporations yeah like who in their good conscience is in there because the metro stand for like a lot of things that the daily mail don't like and vice versa so anyway not getting into that so hang on like what position do you have to be in to not be able to prevent yourself rolling down a hill because well a they parked at the top of a hill that's a terrible move mm. But like right on the precipice, seemingly, because they rolled immediately, <laughs> very quickly, and managed to flip a car. You're in, was it Derbyshire? Mm -hmm. Are there no fields? <laughs> How hard gone. were they rocking this car? Right. Yeah. But like, you can't get to the handbrake. 
I don't know. I don't know. We're not going to act it out. <sighs> God damn it. I'm just, I'm just trying to think of how they would have actually done this as well. Because the handbrake's right there between the two front seats. So I'm assuming they were doing stuff in the back and maybe accidentally kicked the handbrake. The back I mean, the doing stuff in the front back is going to be extremely seats. difficult. Yeah, because if they're like... doing it, like, you know, they're, they're both in like the front maybe seats and they're why. trying. Like... <laughs> 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 this seems really awkward. Maybe yeah, the handbrake was probably... caught somewhere. That's it, yeah. Right in the fistula. <laughs> <laughs> so while strengthening their relationship, yeah, I was about to say BuzzFeed, because that's the calibre of journalism we have here. Thanks, BuzzFeed. Metro, we know. While doing so, the handbrake has become disengaged and it rolled down a hill before flipping outside. No injuries. Fair play. No injuries. Not that, even so a it's sex okay to laugh about lame. it. Yeah. Yeah, what a terrible story. <laughs> and did you break your leg? Well, there's a car, right? <laughs> People on social media were quick to make fun of the Randy couple. One said, please practice safe sex and leave handbrake on. <laughs> Another said, when I said, let's try a different position, this isn't what I meant. Um, strengthening their relationship is possibly the best euphemism ever. Shut up, Twitter. I don't care. Let's see what the comments say. <laughs> that position is in the Karma Sutra. Insurance claims form is going to be fun. <laughs> how, did they spell, how did they spell Karma Sutra? K A M A S U T R. So not C A R. C A R. Wait. Oh yeah. Literal car car. <laughs> Come on. Who gives Damn a flying section. fuck if you ran out of stories? That was me on my alt account. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a climax they were not expecting. That's that's my article. Um, don't have sex in cars if it's all the way like perched on the side of a hill. Yeah. Or like a cliff. What is this? Like Precarious. a fucking yeah. like, road runner's cartoon. <laughs> oh, maybe this is what Michael Caine meant at the end of the Italian job. Like, Was that his cunning plan? To yeah, get yeah. Out of <laughs> <laughs> Just bus dangling off the edge of a cliff. Wait a second, boys. I've got an idea. <laughs> We're going to form something of a human centipede. <laughs> Nasty. <laughs> Yeah, that Michael Caine. <laughs> oh, he, he that loves Michael it. You can famous just... star of the human centipede, that Michael Caine. <laughs> <laughs> Starring as every section of the human centipede. <laughs> <laughs> Julia Roberts' brother was in the human centipede. Oh, I'm glad he's doing well. The third one. Oh, the she, third has, one. she has brothers? <laughs> she has a brother, yeah. He, uh, he's popped off in a which bunch. Which one, which... He was in the third one. Yeah. Is that the one where they're in prison? They make a giant because they're like, yeah, this is what you... we'll do to get rid of all the prisoners. We'll just make one big. <laughs> I've not seen any of those films because I think Tom Six is. It's Tom Six, isn't it? Yeah, I watched. Sharp as own ass, but. I watched literally. all three of them with my friend in one night. You poor man. Yeah, I, <laughs> honestly, like, I've got quite a high tolerance. Why do you hate like, your friends? <laughs> she was. She wanted to watch them. And now I, I held up in court. <laughs> like. The second one was more interesting <laughs> until it got really mean spirited at the end. <laughs> like, before, before that, it was very like charming. They, and tried, to, they <laughs> tried to do something different with it, and I was like, "All right, I mean, it's the wrong venue for all of this." I'm so in, still so intrigued, but at the same time, really don't want to watch these films. I, I've read I the Wikipedia's we extensively because oh, okay, yeah, that's what I do in lieu of actually watching. <laughs> Video collab of the two of you reacting to watching the Human Centipede would be I'm up, fantastic. I'm really up for it. Yeah, I'm, right. I'm going for a phase of watching like slightly yeah. fucked up things. That'll serve you know? me right for. Okay, <laughs> sweet. <laughs> I mean, one thing I'm thinking is like, if I was if I was Julia Roberts' brother and I was like, <laughs> hey, can you leverage your incredible like star power to land me a role? <laughs> like, she I would must be hate him. Fucking <laughs> fuming. <laughs> She's like, yeah, no. Do you want to just like you know stitch your mouth to someone else's anus? Like, I can. Oh no, he doesn't. Do he, that doesn't he doesn't. Uh, I, he doesn't. He doesn't get involved in any of that side. He's of things. too. No, he's he's more there for a, like on a consultancy base. <laughs> <laughs> How's your sense be going, boys? Yeah. Oh, that's, oh no. Oh, that stitch work is terrible. No, you can't. You can't have someone that heavy next to someone that petite. It doesn't. Is the second one? Um, it, it's all in black and white. Yeah. Because Tom Six was really trying to do something. I just well, an odious. And he's really, really arrogant. He, he, um, he's in the third one and he's unbearable. Yeah, um, I, can, right. I can imagine. He's unbearable in just normal interviews. I did this whole, uh, he, he's been working on something called the Onania Club for probably going on a decade now. It's just, it's been forever. And I think it's been released, but you can't find it online because it's just so shit. And it's literally, have you seen the trailer? It's literally like Windows Movie Maker levels like this. Like, 
it's so bad. It's about this group of elite LA women that have like this sex club where they masturbate over 9-11 footage. It's literally like 4chan's 14 year old sense of humor. It's like the B board, you know? And like, oh, this woman, she has cancer and then they're all around like masturbating. And it's like, and Tom Six, he, don't laugh. <laughs> Well, Kes Motion Kes Motion is going to be one of the best directors in the world one day. Like, you better not fucking do anything like that. Or if you're going to do it, do it tastefully. Dude, oh, my God. and in interviews, he's like, "This will be the most horrific viewing experience anyone's ever had. It's going to be the most fucked up film in history." And it's like, "Oh, shut up, shut up." I spit on your grave. The originals and remake are probably better. I don't disagree that it's probably a horrific viewing experience, but not for the reason he thinks. Yeah. What else? What? Where are we in the news week now? What? What's happening? Um, oh, go on here. Like schools, new military camp rules will meet detention for repeated eye rolling. What? Um, I read this. Yeah, this yeah. is what. Yeah. Nanny State Britain, back yeah, at it again. This is it, yeah. Persistent eye rolling and huffing, whatever that is, will be punished by a school as part of a series of new rules, which have been likened to a military camp. Uh, rolling up blazer sleeves, forgetting to bring a ruler, drinking fizzy drinks and spraying deodorant are all banned as part of the strict doctrine of behaviour issued by St. Bennet Biscop Catholic Academy near Newcastle. Um, hey, yeah, the deodorant thing. I'm behind yeah. that because teenage boys in schools with their deodorants, like using a whole can of Lynx Africa. No, not, I mean, not happening. Yeah, but like speaking as someone who was once a teenage boy, like the onset of like early pubescent BO is far, far worse. <laughs> like <laughs> Also the fact that, um, I don't know if your school's anything like mine, um, they didn't give you time to shower after PE. Ooh. So in summertime, you just do a single lesson of PE outside, possibly even a double, depending on if you're doing GCSE level. Mm. Um your your class ends at like on the hour and the next ah. one begins on the hour so you have no time to change and get down to your so no one's showering in this period everyone's just covered in summer grime we never mm. showered after pe the showers were yeah. there in the changing rooms imagine, but we, i never no, saw we, any girl ever use the imagine shower imagine how bad that kind of, must smell. i thought that'd be yeah. weird it's Excuse horrific the, so yeah, yeah that, that is odd actually. That we just... A shower in a can is probably preferable. I thought it was yeah. like an American thing that they showered out of pee. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's just like the decent human thing to do. <laughs> I know. Uh, to be fair, I was one of those girls that you like never didn't... worked up a sweat, did you? I never participated <laughs> in PE. Yeah. I was always skiving off or trying to like smoke cigarettes or something. <laughs> <laughs> I was a proper little hoodlum. Anyway, yeah. So military school. Yeah, I mean it's um it's bizarre like how far reaching this is for a lot of the parents as well. Like uh, you know they're saying their kids are really struggling with their mental health on the back of like just fearing doing anything. Like you can't roll up your sleeves. That's mental to me. Like mm. and um, you shouldn't yeah. do it with blazer sleeves because you end up looking like like an eighties gangster. This is it. Yeah, and like it never really That's... like has like, the effect that like you're looking Ross for. Like Ross and Chandler in that episode. <laughs> yeah, of Friends. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you look God, like yeah. that. <laughs> so in fairness, they are stopping people looking like complete tits. But that huffing. is true. Yeah, huffing. Yeah, I mean, I, what is huffing like? <sighs> what? Well, That's, That's, That's very passive science. aggressive for a student. So shut sometimes, up. sometimes, sometimes passive aggressive. Actually, sometimes teachers <laughs> deserve it. Our teachers, Maybe. right? Oh, our teachers in my secondary school are a bunch of. Some of them were pretty safe, but Maybe. some of them were dicks. But mm. can you also see that the students are usually worse? I went to a school yeah. no, for quite a while. In no, not in mine. Oh, God. Not in mine. We had this We had this one This one teacher, and she, I never saw her smile. She actually, um, she enjoyed, like, yelling, because she was just yelling all the time. We weren't really, like, doing anything. <laughs> I'll put my hands up and say when we were doing stuff, because, like, I, yeah, I, like, I used to, like, being a bit naughty and... You know, trying to eat as much pro plus as possible to get her. <laughs> I would do that. Like try to eat loads of do you never have did no one here never have a phase of like eating loads of pro plus to try to feel a high? No. <laughs> no? Yeah, your hands would shake. This is why I can't do drugs. This is it. <laughs> it was I all think there. Wait, this is what? illustrating why you are the way you are. <laughs> Wait, were none of you eight years old trying to sniff prit sticks <gasps> to try to feel something? Did I, no I'm... one do that? I mean, it, it, you can't feel anything because they are kids safe in that way. Like, there's well, a, yeah, you no never like tried to prit stick. You just, never tried to huff a bit of prit stick. That's Presumably, just they amateur were. Hour, man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> my my childhood best friend, he would do it, so I'd copy him. <laughs> it's all coming together now, isn't it? Um, <laughs> no, we we did have this one teacher who she, 
I, maybe she even got off on just yelling all the time because she would just yell all of the time. A proper, like you're going to do yourself damage because you're red in the face and there are some veins bursting. And I oh, wonder if right. she's, I wonder if she's still okay or had like early onset heart problems. <laughs> but no, she was pretty. I can look back at that for an adult lens and be like, why were you actually teaching teenagers? Because they are going to be difficult. Yeah. Like, why were you putting yourself through this? just go like to scream at some primary school students aren't they like yes. no, we had like some primary school teachers who would be like so severely this one lady who's so severely strict she reminded mm. me of one of the witches from roald dahl's the witches <laughs> great book <laughs> great book good reference but she i can look back and be like those people were suited for teaching mm. some people clearly weren't and we also did have a nonce for a substitute teacher one time so you've got to that's the they? rules yeah, yeah there's always going to be why every teacher. school is meant to prepare you for later life and you've got to know how to deal with those pedos <laughs> he took pictures of us oh god yeah he took pictures of us well yeah no, no. <laughs> not like in no, well that's the thing that's the thing like it can seem innocent even though it's it's really not he would bring mm. in dance mats for all of us to, to dance on then he took some pictures of us dancing on the you know which uh, yeah like and some... then he got done for loads of um cp on his computer and then when he was released on bail he went out and bought another computer to download more and then he got put in jail oh god <laughs> i'm allowed to laugh at this it was my teacher <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Nice, nice guy other than that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm sure he was. You were, you were saying <laughs> about sometimes the students are worse. <laughs> because of... Uh, they're being this stri strict, they're hiding something. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, another parent, uh, Carmen Strawn. I'm going to assume I've pronounced that correctly. Um, so she had spent over £800 on school uniforms in total after confusion over whether her daughter's trousers would be classed as too tight. Like, I don't, like what? From what which else? company is she ordering these trousers? This is it, yeah. And like, pounds. how many pairs of trousers has she gone through to get to this point? <laughs> like, because I know school uniforms are supposed to be expensive, but like, to this extent, like, has she bought like 20 pairs or something? Like, we, would, we would all wear really tight, like, trousers on that's purpose. That's it, yeah. Is <laughs> this for dance mat teacher going? Yeah. <laughs> No, he was, he was well old. He was well ugly, mate. Like, that was a history teacher that everyone had a crush on. Not me, though. That I'm doesn't relate to how tight your trousers were. <laughs> Maybe something else random. Just, just saying. No, we'd, yeah, we'd wear tight trousers. Because we liked the way they looked, I suppose. I just, I just feel like before I hit the £800 mark, I probably would have <laughs> given up and bought my kid clown trousers just to, like, make absolutely sure, like... Like there's no no possible way that they no, I think it's a uh, sort of, of bagginess. I think it's a sort of Goldilocks and Three Bears type situation. Oh, Some man. of them are too loose. <laughs> Some of them are too tight. I do yes. find it very strange when schools because I follow a Facebook group that's like angry, like angry people in local newspapers. It's called something like that, and there's always stories of oh my kids got sent home from school and like um. Not um well, not permanently excluded, but like temporarily excluded from school for a few days because Maybe. yeah, because they had a haircut or they got an ear piercing or there's a lot of them. Stay and, home till you've grown your hair back. And schools <laughs> always say we're getting them ready for the for the workplace. But most workplaces don't give a shit. What are you talking about? You can wear this like well, you can wear the, like this. In the time that we were in school learning that, workplaces realised you can't discriminate like based on appearance. So we were just taught a whole bunch of useless lessons. That's it, yeah. I think we were prepared for a different time. But... We were prepared for our parents' world. Yeah. And then the world changed. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> you know, we're just out here trying to... Out here with doing our, our best of podcasts. Jeans. Yeah. <laughs> What's your story? Oh, right, okay. So I've gone from animal feature to supernatural. Love that, go Ooh. for it. Always I welcome. Love... I mean, I love these stories just because of um, the people you find in them. Okay. Like, they're, they're never about... Um, it's never about the animals, really. No. Not so the animals, the ghosts. <laughs> the ghosts. Easy mistake to make. Yeah. <laughs> Hold your laughter. We'll just see where the tone is for this one. But yeah, okay. mum says she was attacked by a sexually charged ghost for two years. Oh, God. Well, we'll, we'll see. A mum who says she was haunted for two years by a deviant spirit. Spirit is uh, hyperlinked. Click it. 
I clicked the hyperlink. No, I've just done these screenshots, so I won't end up getting like random <laughs> pop-ups and stuff because I'm not I'm not going on a hyperlink march through Lad Bible on what spirit is. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, believes bringing a new baby into her home finally rid her of the sinister presence. Oh, that's quite sweet, actually. Well, mum is of, it? Well, mum <laughs> of six. So, don't know what the other kids were doing. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> they, they weren't bundles of joy, apparently. Mum, I'm just. I'm just inferring this from the article and the information I've already read. Um, it was only the last baby that did the trick. Okay, Mum of yeah. six, Charlene Smith, 36, claims she had her first encounter with a ghost in October 2015 when she was roused from her sleep by someone or something touching her intimate areas, if only. Initially believing it were, was her partner at the time getting frisky, but she soon learned it was actually the work of a spectre. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Mm. After a thorough, <laughs> thorough investigation, I assume, which had entered her house in Harlow, Essex. There we go. Which resulted in her calling in Ghostbusters, mediums, <laughs> and even a priest to try and help remove the spirit. So, so there's a lot going on there already. Um, Are there actual Ghostbusters in England, and why haven't yeah. we got them on the podcast That's to it. interview them? What the fuck? <laughs> well, this is what I was thinking when I was reading this article the first time. There's definitely some stuff here for us for later episodes. Excellent. Um, actual Ghostbusters. I'll spoil it for you. They don't reveal their names, um, anything about them, or you know anything more really. So it could have just been bullshit. <laughs> Sorry Just to say. three guys from down the pub or something. Like, yeah, no, we've got loads of experience. <laughs> <laughs> Charlene, who said she was forced to flee her home on two occasions due to the presence, recalled the attacks had become daily after a priest came to the house and sprinkled it with holy water in April 2016. So he made it worse. Yes. The priest the, made the it worse. The priest fucked it up. Again. Can you sue the church? <laughs> you could probably try. I'll do it. I'll do it free. Yeah, why not? I don't know how far you get. <laughs> they're too busy telling kids what they can and can't wear, and if they can huff. This is it, yeah. <laughs> just in between that, can you come and <laughs> sprinkle holy water just around the house? Okay. Um, it had made the haunting ten times worse. The kids were also seeing things and feeling spirits brush against them. They were as distressed as I was. She continued, The first night I fled, it attacked me in my bedroom. Shadowy arms rained down on me as it scratched and pulled me. I was terrified and decided to record it on my phone to prove what was happening. Um, there is a related video to this, which isn't the same thing at all. It's not from the same article. It's just a totally different thing in Glasgow. So whatever she filmed on her phone, I didn't see. But um, the shadowy arms raining down on her sounds an awful lot like what happens in low-rent horror films. Yeah. I assume she's probably watched a few of um, I called my mum and sent her the video. She came right away and knocked on the door, telling us to get out of the house. So we all rushed out. She took us to the council that morning to try and find a new house. And from that moment on, she completely believed that what was happening at home was supernatural. We're not done yet, but that's a great council visit. Yeah. Isn't it? <laughs> Could uh, me and my, at this point, five kids have yeah. a new house, please? What's going on? Haunted. It's just raining arms. <laughs> yeah, you know the shadow arms yeah. that happen sometimes. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, we've had quite a lot of problems around that area. That uh, place I rode, yeah. You're in, oh, yeah, you're, yeah. You're, in, you're in Harlow, Essex, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, God, that explains it. No, the black mould and the, the shadow arms. <laughs> a second attack not long after left Charlene so scared that she scooped up her children and ran into the street. All six of them, Jesus. She's a... <laughs> <laughs> like a... Like a spider, just on the back. That's what I thought it would say. Like a harness, you know, like a harness that she's got. Yeah. Like, oh, the spiders that carry the babies on their backs. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's like a, like a rucksack made of cargo shorts. Just with made, giant Made of children, <laughs> like for the sound of it. The human, human pyramid. Right? Everyone link arms. arms. <laughs> That's more haunting than the rest of it, honestly, yeah, yeah. the image of that. If we're wrong and this is true, we are such dicks. Yeah. I'm going to go out on a limb. And being an ordained minister as I am, who can perform exorcisms. You should have done it. it Why didn't you, you go to the wasn't house? It? You made it ten times worse, Rob. <laughs> honestly, I wasn't giving it my heart. <laughs> oh, I, 
I don't know. I haven't done an exorcism in a while. I kind of phoned this one in. I'm real sorry. I don't know. Her <laughs> kids kept rolling their eyes at me. So I was yeah. out there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. The bit of the exorcisms right at the back of the Bible. And, oh, I God, know, yeah, just, no. by, the, by the time I get to Revelation, I'm so bored after like yeah. a couple of books. <laughs> so, but the most disturbing revelation came when a medium visited the house in July 2016. <laughs> Shh, serious. A Sorry. medium. A medium, yes. Telling Charlene that she was the centrifugal force causing all the upset. She was the cause. That's gaslighting her, isn't it? Yeah. With these ghostly, these arms and stuff. Like, it's all you. You're just such a bitch. <laughs> Maybe the ghost will stop haunting you if you stop being so bloody crazy all the time. Like, <laughs> I don't like this medium. I don't think they're a very nice This is person. why you can't keep a boyfriend for so long. It's all, of, it's all you. I suspect they might not be honest about their work. What are you... Shocking. We should get one on this channel. We should get this one. All right. Well, unfortunately, none of the names for any of the helpers were brought in. So again, mm -hmm. leads me to believe this might not be all there. <laughs> she recalled how the unwelcome events were triggered after her uncle died tragically at the age of 48 after falling down the stairs in, the se in September of 2015. Mm -hmm. Here's the bit where Lad Bible gets a bit passive aggressive and they could have stated her kids earlier on and not at this point. Charlene who is mum to Courtney, 17, Chanel, 15, Charlene again, 13, Mackenzie, 12, Chloe, 10, and Chardonnay, 3, said... All of that. What's the next one going to be called? Peter Grigio. <laughs> <laughs> the circumstances around his death were traumatic and we really struggled as a family. I started lighting candles and asking for a sign from him. It was after this that strange things started happening. Objects would move around the house and cupboards started to bang, just like every beginning sequence in a horror film. Oh my god. Mm -hmm. At first I thought it was my nan communicating with me, as I see her face in the house sometimes. <laughs> but when I started to feel tickles against my leg and feel someone touching me in more intimate places, I realised something more sinister was in my home. Or if it was the ghost of your uncle, maybe he wasn't telling everyone everything. <laughs> the abuse which took place in daylight as well as at night would often leave her with scratches and bruises as the obsessed spirit grabbed her and clawed at her clothes Charlene added I couldn't sleep as I was so scared it would touch me here's the bit you can't see there's the related video but actually it's just a thing about a family in Glasgow with a baby monitor and I couldn't actually see what the ghost was in that video either so I was baited twice oh so that, that was a ghost one as well it wasn't just them like really happy about the new baby monitor yeah. so, <laughs> you can hear them through the other room it's great like, <laughs> just uh, I was so anxious I was jumping off the walls for nine months in which the haunting was at its most intense I was living in fear of the spirit I had no idea how it manifested or what had caused it to invade my home. She turned to help from a priest who blessed the home with holy water and ghost hunters saying they never picked up any activity until I came into the house. The moment I walked in, uh, all their machines lit up. What machines? <laughs> what are they? What are they using? Oh, God. But at least we found out that it is all about her. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Rather surprisingly. Well, me. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Eventually, Charlene found answers when a medium visited the home in 2016 and advised her to admit some positive energy to banish it for good. Was this Charlene 1 or Charlene 2.0? Charlene's her 13 or 10-year-old, I can't remember which. Yeah. Chardonnay is the ray of hope. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> don't be, don't. No, Go I'm laughing over harsh. there. <laughs> you, are you in tears? I'm not crying. It's just, it's just so beautiful. It's, it's, it's a lot, isn't it? it is it's a lot. A lot yeah. for one I, I couldn't believe how long this article like managed to keep it up. Um, this isn't this isn't like metro levels of journalism either. It just gets better and better as it goes. I thought it was connected to the house, but the reality is that it had latched onto me, and no matter where I went, it would follow me. She said. She then signed up to learn about mediumship, throwing herself into meditating along her. Alongside her classes in a bid to control the energy her uncle's death had unleashed. That's a... That's a hell of a sentence. That's, that's that a hell is. of a claim. Yeah. <laughs> given that all of this is nonsense. Wait, it's her uncle. I thought it was her granddad. Uh, it was her uncle who died untimely. 
At um, 48, right? At 48. And her nan just pops up sometimes in the house. Yep. <laughs> just see her face about. <laughs> there is a picture. There it's is a... like in the sixth sense. Yeah. Where he's talking to his nan. And she's he's like the bumblebee. Like, <laughs> like, That's it. Yeah. So she signed up the to. Fuck? She Wait, signed where? up to mediumship courses. Good for her. I should do. Night, it's always nice to have a hobby. Presumably yeah. a night class. I don't know. Um, <laughs> however. The hauntings lingered for two years, although they were nowhere near as bad as they had been before. That's good. Much to Charlene's surprise, it was after giving birth to her sixth child, Chardonnay, in April 2018, when the spirit seemed to have been banished for good. She now calls her daughter, who was born just at just 34 weeks, her guardian angel, as she is certain it was her positive life force that helped shift the ghost. It was instant. The moment I returned home with my little girl, the spirit disappeared, she said. I call Chardonnay my guardian angel because she saved us. She is a miracle and so pure and loving. Charlene has since channeled her psychic gift to help others, giving readings to family and friends, and also teaching her children how to keep their inner demons at bay. I mean, I don't want to cry bullshit for the whole thing, but I sense it might all have been made up. What say you? (laughs) I, I mean, never say never, but like... It, it sounds like a stretch. Is what it said. sounds like. I didn't share any pictures of this woman. Um, yeah. I just really like the name Chardonnay for a kid. I like that she called one of her kids Charlene after herself. I like that. Charlene the that's second. A pretty yeah. fucking, that's an alpha Chad move. Charlene. Yeah. Chardonnay. Mm. Yeah. I believe her. Why not? You believe uh, her? All the shadow no. arms from the ceilings? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, why not? Of course I don't. Of course Maybe. I don't. I've got an image to maintain, though. Yep, totally believe I get on another podcast. Let's just, let's get let's get her to give us a reading. <laughs> I oh. would like to get a reading from someone if we can do it on the podcast. So much the better. Otherwise, I'm just pissing money up the wall of my own accord. Fair enough. Yeah. Have you ever had a? Have I ever had had a, a medium read me? M- medium readings. Anyone try and do anything supernatural? Absolutely not. I haven't. <laughs> You haven't? Oh, well, thanks for raising your hand, me, then. Me, and wasting no. everybody's time. Well, you just calm down for two seconds. My boyfriend got a tarot reading the other day. Tarot? Oh. Tarot tarot cards. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And he he tried to pick them as random as possible. and Fate won't allow you to do that, I'm afraid. Nope. And, you know, they, they, said, some, they said some stuff, but it was quite, like, vague or whatever. And then, you know, one, one about his uh, relationship with me mm. and the... Uh, Yep, and this is how we know it's bullshit because the the tarot card reader said your relationship is going really well. Yeah, she's the um, <laughs> she she's the Trinity to your Neo. He didn't tell he didn't say anything about the Matrix. My my boyfriend didn't say anything about the Matrix. The Matrix is my favorite film. I am no I am not Trinity. I am Neo. He's called the <laughs> he's called the One for a reason. That is me. I I was furious. <laughs> I was like, ah. He was happy about it. He was like, oh, you're the Trinity to my Neo. I am not. You're the trinity to my nerd, if anything, <laughs> bucko. I'm the Keanu Reeves here. Uh, psh, bullshit, whole thing. Fuck uh, off. Always viewed you more as one of those agent clones. <laughs> yeah, you got to give me more of a Hugo weaving when he's freaking out energy. I did. I did like his little give me diatribes your, in the film. Give me your best, yeah. Mr. Anderson, right now. I'm out of practice. Why are you pointing at me? Mr. Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> what the kind of things does he say? He says a lot of mental stuff, doesn't he? Oh, lots yeah. of it. Lots of, lots of edgelordy stuff that, Mr. now, Mr. Anderson? Actually. That is the sound of inevitability. It's the sound of your death. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Anderson. My name is Neo. I could do that whole fucking film. Fuck you, tarot reader. I am the indisputed king. I have something about fate right here. Ooh. Let's hear it. Me to, first, I am the Neo you, you of this first, podcast. <laughs> okay, so we're going Aquarius. Stop, press. This is your month, Aqua. Yes, it is. Prioritise your wants, needs and desires from the 11th when some I planetary magic puts you, puts you water bearers at the front of the cosmic queue. Just choose a direction you want to go in and the universe should provide the stepping stones to your success. You have more oomph than even you realised. Ha! And I've got so much oomph. A flirtation is also starred when Mars meets the new moon on the 6th. A flirtation? A flirtation. I don't... That could be anything. What kind of flirtation? I don't know. It stops there. What? It's is not, that it? It's not, it's not as in-depth as some other mags. Well, I agree with all the first... Oh, flirtation. Ugh. 
Well, my boyfriend flirts. Sickening. Me. He's always, nah, yeah, uh, bucko, neo trinity. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Got good news for Kes Motion. Kes Motion's like Morpheus of the podcast. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm Neo because I'm the best still. Yeah, so. Yeah, he's, so, he's totally amorphous. He's very zen. He did a bunch of acid and got zen. <laughs> What's your... It's, uh, you're, you're before me, right? Cap he's Capricorn. Capricorn. You're getting the balance right between grand schemes and little details of life, Cappy. Oh, that sounds very true, actually. It does sound true. After the 20th, you goats could find yourself in a new location too, whether it's in an office building, abode, or holiday destination. With powerful Pluto on a mission to reinvigorate you, be ready to accept changes. <laughs> Financially, there could be buried treasure in the form of a forgotten bond, vouchers, or dormant account. Okay, that's really weird because all of that is true, and I don't like that. I oh my God, this is talking about me. Wait, what? Why is why is Pluto yeah, bothering Pluto. to help your life? <laughs> We've not been nice to Pluto. Is it is it a dwarf planet? Is it a planet? Is it part of the? Didn't we kick it out? Is it allowed back in? Well, what did the thing is, I, but Pluto the is the the really uh, small one, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's the tiny, oh, tiny guy. Yeah. And then we're getting some investment. The uh, icy one. <laughs> well, there we go. So for once. Did for you once know there is a planet made of pure diamond and it is worth like a hundred nonillion pounds? Yes. Yeah. Why is Pluto trying to help you out? What have you ever done for it? Huh? Nothing. So we're both Libra, as you say. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I believe so. If you know when your own birthday is. Um, <laughs> you don't have to say it about. here. We'll just no. check your passport later. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Breathe a sigh of relief, Libra. Thank you. Into the mic. It's our new horoscope ASMR. <laughs> yeah. The new moon forms in your sign on the 6th. I don't know what that means. Making challenges easier and putting you back in the driving seat. Oh, sweet. It's a cosmic signal that you are good enough. Oh. oh. This makes me feel oh, so God. warm and fuzzy. Oh. Thank you, <laughs> magazine, which I won't name. Uh... And that all you hope for in life can be achieved. Once communicator Mercury picks up speed mid-month, plans spring back into life, and outstanding paperwork should be signed, sealed, and delivered on. Things may be hectic, but hang on in there. Your prize in the last week of October is a bucket load of joyful moments, including a little romance. Ooh. Outstanding. Looking Sweet. forward to all of that. Okay. I mean, paperwork the lot. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I do have a lot of paperwork to get ca uh, get caught up on. So, yeah, I think the 6th is going to be a busy old day for me. But, yeah, I, 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 overall, I'm pretty I'm pretty pleased with that. I just think it's good that for the low, low price of whatever this costs, <laughs> you can get complete peace of mind. Just absolute validation. from Cosmic validation. Yeah. And that's what it's all about. So Thank you, Mercury. So, on that cosmic validation <laughs> bombshell, that is the end of this episode of the Elise Easy Podcast. I do hope you enjoyed Oh my god! I thought, felt like doing a blue Peter from all of us here. <laughs> <laughs> like some weird shit. Like some weird stuff he's taking over. Remember to follow us on Spotify and Apple iTunes, whatever. Like Apple Podcasts. I don't know. They're rebranding themselves. Get a life. I, but follow us on there and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Like, dislike, comment for the engagement. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Let's do a blue Peter awkward wave into that one. <laughs>